Hey, folks, my guest today is Amal P.S. He's a former Infosys and Edge Verve product manager. He's been part of the leadership of two small size businesses, enabled scale during his tenure with over 200% increase in revenue and better visibility. He's now a pro athlete, passionate about fitness, new ideas and designs, and is building tech to connect people and new age technologies at Keto.Works. All right, Amal, you ready to take us to the top? Yeah, sure. Nathan, happy to be here. Thank you. Professional for athlete, huh? Which sport? Uh, kickboxing and uh, fitness. Um, yeah, Amazing. short put javelin. All right. Tell us what you're selling at Keto Works. It's K-E-I-T-O dot works. What's the business? Um, so we are having a no-code automation platform, uh, primary focused on data automation and workflow automation for enterprise businesses. Mm-hmm. And what are these businesses paying on average per month to use the technology? So they pay on transaction uh, per month. It would be around five thousand dollars to ten thousand dollars for usage. Okay, okay. and that, that's pretty expensive for a no-code tool. You're targeting the enterprise. What enables you to sell at such a high price point? Uh, it would be the kind of uh, return which we can bring to the enterprises. Mostly focused on the productivity, accuracy, and the lowest uh, exception rate which you could see in the market. The lowest what rate? Uh, exception rates. So what most is that? of the most of the enterprise automation tools have a very high exception rates, which are hidden in the system, uh, which means that even after implementing, you would have to spend quite a lot of money on uh, managing your exceptions, right? Whatever does not work uh, in automation, so-called, you will have to handle with humans in between, which means it's no longer a true automation solution. So we look at having a real automation case for our businesses. I think that what ensures us to have a high price in the market. Okay, interesting. And then tell me about some of your customers, right? Uh, are, are these like, you know, enterprise accounts? I mean, uh, you have Thomas Cookless on your site, you have the government of India, United States Mortgage Service, what are they using you for? Uh, so they are looking uh, using primarily for the uh, information extraction and uh, information automation side. Uh, so we have the product dealing with information in two layers. One is with respect to fetching information from different sources, right? Whether it is your textual or document or image sources, we are able to fetch information. Second is to ideally process those information and pass it on to any of the business ops, right? Whether it is processing your loans or whether it is validating the KYC or uh, whether it is you have to perform certain number of action based on the data that is available. I think all of these actions could be triggered within our platform. Are you selling mostly to FinTech firms? You mentioned KYC processing. Yeah, fintech is uh, definitely one of our customers. Uh, BFSI sector, yeah. That's your largest sector is fintech? Uh, not largest, but yeah, primarily this is one of the growing sectors, I would say. And uh, it shows quite promising. And we are also launching a new vertical SaaS application in the same sector. Interesting. Okay, so uh, we'll get more of your backstory here in a second. But how many customers are you serving today? Uh, more than 10 enterprise customers. Okay. And so can we take the 10 times 5,000 bucks a month minimum? You're doing like fifty, sixty thousand $60,000 a month in revenue right now? Uh, no, we are uh, slightly above that. So we do have a lot of uh, production contracts in place right now. So we have completed a lot of uh, POCs, uh, paid POCs with the customers, enterprise customers, uh, as you have, as you already know, right? Enterprise customers takes good amount of lead time to ideally start implementing because of the kind of security measures and the kind of contracting process it is involved. So ours is not a conventional SaaS solution. It is more or less an uh, enterprise licensing model is also involved in place, right? Your contracting process is slightly lengthier than an average business. Understood. But in terms of av- like actually onboarded licenses, you, you're doing what, $70,000, $80,000 a month right now in revenue? Uh, so we have crossed around uh, 200K plus uh, in a year. That's what uh, where we stand now. Okay, that doesn't answer my question though. So in November, in terms of recurring revenue, how much did you do last month in total revenue? Uh, so we crossed uh, fifteen to fifteen thousand dollars across One five. Yes. Okay, got it. So so you're doing about fifteen thousand dollars a month in revenue, and if you're doing that today, where were you exactly a year ago? Uh, a year ago, uh, we would be slightly around zero, <laughs> near to zero. Did you have any revenue a year ago? No, uh, we were having a very near to zero revenue, right? Thousand, thousand, two thousand dollars is where we are standing. Okay, got it. So you you were thousand bucks a month a year ago. Now fifteen thousand dollars a month. So so you're scaling here. Now, if you're doing fifteen thousand dollars a month and you have ten enterprise customers, they're not paying five or ten grand a month each. They're paying like a thousand a month each or two thousand a month each. Correct. So we we do have two kinds of customers. A couple of the customers who have converted from a paid POC to productions. A couple, a couple of customers who are in production. So, so we are at a stage where we have closed a lot of customers 
moved from the POC stage, the proof of concept stage to the production stage. That's where we are in. I think in the coming two years, we would cross a uh, million dollar ARR, right? So that's that's where we could see. Well, I understand where you could go, Amal, but in terms of where you are right now, again, customers are paying on average like $1,500 a month for $15,000 a month in total revenue, correct? Uh, not every customer, Nathan. So we have a couple of customers, two or three customers who are paying the total license fees. So other customers have just moved from a POC to the production environment. Yeah. So they are in the process of ideally uh, onboarding into us in terms of uh, full scale I'm all uh, sorry. licensing. I, averages, we're just dividing two numbers. If you're doing $15,000 a month in revenue, which is what you just said, and you have 10 customers, we can divide, right? So each customer is on average is about $1,500 per month. Yeah, so that would become the average uh, size of the customer uh, who is paying today. But it consists of two kind of uh, revenue numbers, right? One is from the license fee. Second is from your paid POC cost. So paid POC cost uh, drastically drops down the average uh, billing of a customer, uh, Nathan. And how much? How much are the paid POCs typically? Uh, it costs from around two thousand to uh, five thousand dollars per customer. one time or monthly. It's a one time cost, uh, Nathan. I see. And 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 how? What enables you to move someone from paying three thousand bucks one time to four or five thousand dollars per month after the POC? Uh, so uh, during the POC, customer validates uh, whether the platform could handle the workflow. Uh, it could handle the information extraction. That's what the customer looks at. Uh, once that is stable, uh, the customers looks at moving a large volume of data. Right. So here, during the POC, it might be a minimal size of data. So there is one mortgage customer where we have made them live, uh, where they are processing around hundred thousand plus documents transacted every month right so that means the volume increases and your license cost also increases so the license cost is directly proportional to the volume of data processed in the platform i see makes sense tell me more about how you funded the business are you guys bootstrapped or have you raised so we were bootstrapped in the early ages uh, later we had a couple of angel rounds uh, we raised uh, around four hundred thousand dollars until then. And what now, what year uh 1920 so two years back to back and and four hundred thousand on a safe, I assume. Uh, four hundred thousand on equity. On a twenty million valuation. Uh, not not twenty million uh, valuation either. So currently we are in the process of raising another round. So that would become our first institutional round. Sorry, yeah. When you raised the four hundred thousand, what valuation did you raise at? Yeah, so I I won't be able to comment on the valuation as current current rounds are ongoing either. Well, anyone that's looking at your current round is going to ask for a cap table and they're going to see what the valuation was in your seed round. Yeah, it was at 4.3 million. Okay, got it. So, so you sold about 10% of the business. Yes, uh, not, not uh, 10%. I, did, I think over a period, 20% of the business. So we had two rounds in the past. So the most recent round was at $4.3 million free money. Okay, so you've sold to, right now, investors own 20% of the business. Correct, Nathan. And, and how much do you still own? Uh, I own almost seventy percent of the business. Okay, so you're you're the major shareholder here. So why why go raise more capital? Obviously, you get diluted. Where, where do you think you'll invest that to drive growth? Uh, so first, I think uh, we were trying to identify the product market uh, fit and where we need to spend the money. So so today we know where we can spend the money, and that's when we started raising our institutional capital now. How much are you looking to raise? Uh, One point two mil, and half of that is already subscribed. Oh, great! What valuation? Uh, so we would be raising at around 10 uh, mil valuation. Does that feel high or low to you? Uh, no, the, it's it's actually a, a emotional feeling. Right? It's not uh, something bound to what do we feel. Uh, I think collectively we feel fine with the valuation and it's uh, completely a win-win for both of us. Mm-hmm. And if investors currently own 20% and you own 70%, where's the other 10%? So we have ESOPs, uh, employee shares. Uh, a lot of the employees... Early employees on a uh, good chunk of the company. I see. I see. Tell me more about that. What's the team size today? So we have uh, 14 people in the team. Uh, we have six interns working full time. So that's the total team. I see. And how many engineers am I? Uh, primary engineers. <laughs> Nine people are engineers. Oh, wow. Are you an engineer? Uh, yeah, I am an engineer. Very cool. Where's the team based? Uh, team is based out of Pune, India. Something so we special have a scattered. Happened. Yeah, we have a scattered team. We have a couple of them in Bangalore, which is a non-place in India for startups. And uh, we have a couple of them in uh, Delhi. Amazing. Something special is happening in Chennai, Bangalore, Pune. Uh, there's so many great SaaS companies coming out of that region right now. So n- nice work on the growth. Um, are you raising uh, the 1.2 million? Are you ra- is there a healthy angel ecosystem there in, in Pune and in India? Or are you having to look elsewhere to find capital? 
i think uh, in india currently have a healthy uh, ecosystem uh, but at the same time uh, people are looking at uh, us investors where their market is primarily us mhm mm mhm mm makes a lot of sense talk to me about churn uh, these enterprise customers that are now paying per month 2 3 4 5000 bucks a month do they churn uh so mostly for us we have not reached the stage where we could measure a lot of churn because most of the customers are going into contracting for us so we do not know whether how much is the churn rate because Fair most enough. of the enterprise contracts are for uh, two three years kind of a timeline yep 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 talk to me about you mentioned you know where to spend money to drive growth what does it cost to get a new you know $3000 poc uh the cost to get a $3000 poc is around 3 3 and a half thousand dollars for us today okay okay so so you get a sort of instant payback on that which means your only upside is if if they convert and do an annual a monthly plan after the poc correct correct the the cost involved primarily is in terms of uh getting the enterprise onboarded with us right so so we have an uh, instant maybe break even you could say operational break even yep. of the cost spent yeah very cool ma let's wrap up here with the famous five number one favorite business book uh, uh hard things about hard things and uh, shoe dog phil knight number two is there a ceo you're following or studying yeah steve jobs for many long years number three what's your favorite online tool for building keto works uh there are many top of the mind bimsical clickup notion yep clickup's good why do you use clickup uh project management easy to use simple tracking any team member can understand no need of any hand holding uh, and and you're building this in in pune so your whole team in india uses clickup yes correct did you switch from someone that. else like trello or jira or asana or did you always use clickup no we we have been quite uh, tech tech savvy as a team so we have used most of these tools uh, even at an early stage uh, basecamp trello asana jira so whichever is the latest tool which adopts to the pace at which we are going we we jump onto that and try to understand fit in or yeah that's what we do so what do you like about clickup over trello uh, i think trello is a combination of evernote notion and click and other tools which are available jira right so it's it's convenient it could be used by any of the teams so i think that's the most flexible thing trello becomes uh, something which is available at a higher level you cannot go into the minute details of items so trello you could have a good uh, quarterly plan or a yearly plan but once you go down to execution it's very difficult to track in trello it becomes so you really, use clickup really because you can plan and execute inside of clickup versus trello is more for planning correct very cool all right number 4 how many hours of sleep to get every night uh 6 6 hours and what's your situation married single kids married any kiddos no okay and how old are you amal so i'm 29 29 last question something you wish you knew when you were 20 so i wish um i could i could have uh, read a lot more books early on maybe on board uh, and mentor so that i could learn what i could do next in my life Guys, Keto Works, a true uh tool to help you automate uh your data automation needs and scale. They've got 10 enterprise accounts right now, about 1000 bucks a month in revenue a year ago, now $10,000, $15,000 a month as they look to scale. They raised a capital, they raised 400,000 bucks in a seed round, sold about 10, 20% to investors, now raising a 1.2 million series A at a 10 million valuation, team of 14 mainly based in Pune, India as they look to scale. Amal, thanks for taking us to the top. Thank you. Thank you Nathan. Thank you for your time. One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers, they try and do a deal live and the founder shares back-end dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it and the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big sale, a big profitability statement or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. 
Sign up for that at nathanlacka.com forward slash slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right. I'll be in the comments. See ya.